Hey, it's Ryan, KC9WIX. I was in the market for a distribution block that was based around Anderson Power Poles. Started looking online and uh, everything seemed a little overpriced to me. Yeah, I've got one pulled up here. It's uh, the Rig Runner 4005. It costs $69.95 through pretty much every place that I've looked. It offers one input power pole connector and five outputs. Each one has its own independent fuse. But for $70, that seems quite pricey, so I decided to start building my own. In the beginning, I decided I just wanted something similar to that uh, with fuse protection and input output. I really didn't need anything more than that. As I started kind of designing it, I decided I wanted a voltage meter on it and uh, came across a pretty neat meter on Amazon, a little digital display that shows voltage, amperage, wattage, and watt hours. So that immediately got thrown into the mix. I also wanted to add, beyond the Anderson power poles, uh, I added binding posts just in case if I, in a pinch, got to hook something else up that doesn't have a power pole connector on it. And I also wanted a cigarette lighter plug um, for a cell phone charger or anything. The cigarette lighter outlet that I picked up, it actually came with a little USB adapter on it. It's got two uh, USB charging ports on it. Um, so that just adds another input or output. Um, but I've got it running here, hooked up just right now, my ICOM IC7200 and the MFJ993B automatic antenna tuner. Um, speaker all the way off right now, and what it's showing, it's drawing about 1.37 amps and 16.9 watts. I've used 8 watt hours since I've had this hooked up, and right now my battery's running about 12.4 volts. Now we'll show you how we made it.
So now we've got everything mounted inside here. All the ground wires run. We added the binding post to the side. And we've got some extra wires here for our voltage meter. Now to add the labels on this, I drew them up on my computer and I printed them out in reverse and we're going to iron it on to the metal. Just gonna let that sit for a while and let the paper really soak up the water and start peeling that off. I got that one off. It didn't quite stick on the on. That one's a lot worse. We might redo that one completely. We'll see how the rest of them look. That one turned out really well. That was the biggest one, so that's pretty cool. And that one really didn't stick at all. There's a lot missing. So what we'll do is use like some steel wool or fine sandpaper, we'll sand that one down and this other one that didn't turn out so well either and uh, we'll redo both of those. So after trying these again, these last three, they didn't turn out very good at all again. So we decided we're just printing up some labels. We've got there the front's all made up. Some of this, like this cigarette lighter, it's just a little loose. It's meant for a thicker face plate. Um, and just to keep this switch from ever spinning, because um, there's no key in this to keep it from rotating, we're going to put a little bit of hot glue around on here just to make sure that everything stays nice and solid. There we go. Okay, so it's all together. We got the fuses in there. We got a my 12 volt battery here. We'll plug this in the side. I'm going to turn it on here. 
It looks like it's showing 12.61 volts. And just compare with a voltmeter here. Looks like we've got 12.65 with a Klein voltmeter, 12.61 on the display, 12.6. And we'll put a little bit of a load on it. I'll just plug in a cell phone charger quick. Showing about 3 amps, 0.3 amps, and 3.7 watts. 